looking to help and help people you know, create better lives for themselves in different ways. Scott. What's up? <laughs> you can introduce yourself, <laughs> introduce yourself hey. and tell, tell us a little bit about yourself, sir. A little bit about myself. My name is Scott, Scott Manningham. I'm a therapist, uh, ex-military. I'm a father, son, a uh, man of God too. Uh, you know, I'm here, I'm just me. A husband. A husband, I said that right? <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah, no. I'm a, uh, we, he, we he got he he got his wife on his whole shirt. Who he's a representative. We uh, you know, we 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 wear a lot of hats. So you know. Well, let's just so today with how I arrived at this topic that wanted to discuss it today because I was thinking about how we get into, well, personally, for my personal testimony, being in a relationship and losing yourself in a relationship with, and so I've been in that situation that I had to dig myself out of a hole because I was trying to be too, too many different people for, for people other than myself. And I was so my what I really want to discuss is if we could talk about the possible reasons why we lose ourselves in relationship. So my idea is the, you know, for one, our identity never being established before we enter into the relationships. And then, um, then I was also thinking just looking for validation. So I kind of, so I just want to get you guys thoughts on, on that one, the possible reasons why we lose ourselves when we get into relationships. Is that open? Yes, open. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think a lot of it has to do, uh, especially when we're younger, I think a lot of it comes from uh, wanting to please the other person um, because we understand, we talk to them, we go on a date, and they tell us the things that they like. And if we really like this person, a lot of times we try to conform to the things that they like. So sometimes it could be a, a, a thin line to just really being your authentic self and then trying to please that other person. But one thing I've learned over time is, especially going through a divorce and remarrying, is that uh, it's just better to let that person be who they are instead of trying to change them. And one thing, one thing I, I never really understood about relationships is we fall in love with this Macy salesperson, right? That's what I like to call this, this Macy's <laughs> representative, right? But if that's the person that we like, then why, why do we try to change them? You know, it's, 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 it's one of those things It's like, just, just be yourself, you know? And I think if you're being yourself, then you give that other person the option to rather you know, stick with you or, or let them go. So uh, that's, that's what I believe. That's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Scott. Uh, me, I personally believe this kind of along the same thing. I, I think it starts a little bit earlier. And I think that we, a lot of times we don't even know who we are. Like we, especially uh, just speaking from a black male point of view, like we grew, we grow up in a, you know, in an environment where you have to be a certain person or or you believe you have to be a certain person, whether that environment is at home uh, or in, you know, in the streets or in your neighborhood or whatnot. I'm sure every guy deal with it, black or white. But um, we, we grow up feeling like we have to be a certain person. And then when we meet somebody we like, you know, then we finally feel OK to change. But then we realize that, you know, sometimes that that person that we're really trying to be, the person that who we really are, is somewhere in between, somewhere in the middle. And, you know, a lot of times the other person don't agree with that because they fell in love with somebody totally different. So do you believe that when, so from childhood or you're, because you're saying it goes back, that we're just rolling over that, those yeah. <laughs> pretending into, yeah, yeah. into your relationship mm -hmm. being something that you're not 
Yeah, I think I think I think whoever I think you end up merging well in a relationship when people aren't trying, like you said, you trying to change somebody, somebody trying to change you. Nobody's really happy and understanding that, you know what I mean? Like change come in his own time. Like I can't, I can't change you and make you into who I want you to be. Either you develop into that person or you don't. Like, you know what I mean? If I can't be happy with you as you are right now, like I shouldn't be getting in a relationship with you anyway, getting married. But what about you changing? Because that's the thing, like we change, like. Yeah, I definitely change. Yeah. I think we all change. I think we all change. I, I definitely, I know specifically speaking from my point of view, like for me, um, I thought I was somebody else <laughs> until I was able, you know what I mean? I thought I was a total, like, you know, I know who I am like now, but I thought I was, um, you know, whole, had a whole different set of rules, a whole different idea of, you know what I mean? Like life and all of this stuff. But then when you get with the right person, a lot of times that part, dang, <laughs> a lot of times that part, um, it develops naturally. It's more it's more organic than forced. Yeah. What about you, Tanisha? What do you think are some of the reasons that we kind of lose ourselves when we get into these relationships? Well, for the most part, um, as women, we oftentimes you know, we're, we, we're nurturers, of course, by nature. And, you know, I know for me, being raised up in the church and, you know, watching the, um, seeing, you know, the whole man taking the lead role and wife being to help me and, you know, and then being submitted, you know, you kind of watch that and try to, for me, I kind of watch that with women in my life, with my aunts and, you know, my mother, not she, my, 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 you know, my mother wasn't in that role, but I, my aunt was married to a pastor. Actually, two of my aunts were married to pastors, and I was around them quite a bit. And so I know I kind of, you know, looked at their, their marriages, you know, and tried to mimic that, you know, when I got married, you know, and my husband, soon to be ex-husband, unfortunately, he um, was um, a, pre a preacher's kid. So he had that he came from that traditional homemaker, breadwinner situation. And we had the whole discussion about it, even though I was primarily raised up in a single parent home, but I did have women that I did look at. I kind of, I think I kind of gave, uh, for lack of a better term, gave away some of my power in a sense, you know, to try to learn how to fit that submissive. <laughs> And I, which I don't think, I think, so I think being the midst of having this place and it's, it's amazing, you know, for, it has this place. I'm not speaking against that, but I'm just saying, I don't, I don't think that, I think me and my husband both were trying to mimic things that we saw, you know, and I, um, and it wasn't, I like you guys, I heard someone mention, it wasn't authentic. It wasn't, it was more so just trying to figure it out. Um, I was, when I got married, it was my first marriage. It, it was actually my husband's second marriage. And, um, you know, so it, yeah. It, you got it, it right it, the second it, time. <laughs> he did. He got it right the second time. <laughs> 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 right. Oh, yeah. right. You're the prize. You're the prize. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> but, um, but he's an awesome father. He's an awesome father. We have two children. He's an awesome father. But, you know, sometimes, you know, other things don't work out. But God be glory. Mm -hmm. But, um. Yeah, so I, I think I think I think that's what I'm trying to say. For me, I was trying to mimic the women that I saw that have been married for a long time. And what ultimately I think I I learned in my situation is that you have to find what's best for you and your partner. You know, um, not trying to be someone else. I was yeah. definitely trying to mimic. I was definitely trying to mimic my father, who was terrible at it. But I was definitely trying to mimic my father as well. And I think that, I think that, I, what about you? Uh, I can't remember his name. Sean. What about you, Sean? Did you, did you deal with that too? Yeah, Scott, you know, my take is, is, is kind of different because uh, I, I do agree with the whole mimicking thing and who we see. Uh, I think mine's was because I'm a church boy. I think I was trying to be like my pastor. You know, he was really the first man who really spoke into my life. Um, so he has some, you know, some value in my life. He spent some years mentoring me. So I tried to mimic him 
in a lot of ways. Uh, but once I find, and, and, and the funny thing is I ended up going through a divorce because I wasn't being, I was trying to be somebody else who I wasn't, you know, because our characteristics, we, we different people. Mm. And I realized going through a divorce, I'm like, oh yeah, this is why it's important to be my authentic self because um, you can grow, you can grow apart. Yep. You know, I was, I was married for 14 years before I ended up divorcing and there was no infidelity, anything of that nature. We just literally grew apart. We found out that we were two different people who couldn't mesh well after years of uh, evolving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that happens a lot. And I think for me, it's just more so like, Tanisha, you were saying mimicking, but I think when I th- thought about it, I was more so mimicking like TV stuff. It's just like, well, he like this, like, you know, so just thinking like, you got to be uh, fixed up all the time. You got to be this all the time. Like, and everything was just like stressful. And if it was like a flaw, like, oh, I gained weight now, it's like, <laughs> you, you know, so it's just like trying, just trying too hard to fit in a mode that the media was showing because for me, it's just like, okay, well, this is what this person is looking, looking at. And I want to be the person that they need me to be or they want me to be. So, so this is what I need to do. And this is who I need to become, which ended up driving me crazy. But I <laughs> mimic, yeah, <laughs> I think that that mimicking thing is just like a big thing. It's like just trying to paint the picture. And then I also, I can get where you would come from, Sean, with your pastor, because even when we listen to our pastor, we listen to message, or even just reading a Bible, we'd be like, well, dang, you know, we, as women, we read about the virtuous woman. Like, everybody want to be the virtuous woman, but it's like, she is doing a lot. <laughs> like, and, like, I can't, like, I can't add, you know, add up to her <laughs> in, the, in, this, in this moment. So, and like you said, it's just like, come. I know I became free when I got to that balance of who I am. Like I'm flawed, you know, I'm gonna be a little thicker some days than the other. I'm gonna be mm-hmm. lazy. I'm, I can't put cook every single day. I can't clean every day. And just being that now I just present myself as this is who I am. Like it's, right. it's some bad stuff about me. A lot of times I tell people the bad stuff first, but that's just me. So. <laughs> Hey, Shantae, I have a question. Because uh, as I listen to you talk, do you think that uh, how much does media play into all this? Because I, I, I do believe there is sometimes we see movies, we see TV, we see these people, great movies we loved watching growing up, and we try to be those people. And like you said, a lot of times I think we, we try to look for that in somebody else. No, I and, think it plays a huge role. <laughs> mm, mm, like, um, I, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no, I was just saying, because I think sometimes we we mm-hmm. try to be something for somebody else, but they don't even know who they are. No, I. but I think that's so true. I think, especially now with reality TV, and even before then with reality TV, I know for me, it's like, from watching TV, it's like, okay, I, you know, my face has to be made up every day. I got to wear heels. Like literally, I was the person wearing heels at the grocery store because I felt like, well, if this person can, which I'm not even seeing a whole life, but if this person can be fixed up and beautiful and cute and doing all of this every day, I should be able to do the same thing too. So, um, and then also trying to be, because of course, being saved, trying to be somewhat of a submissive, <laughs> a submissive wife, and make going home to cook dinner, and and still and being that person, being June Cleaver, being uh, <laughs> you know, being the the glamour, the the housewife, being this, you know, just trying being all of these things and one. I think it plays a huge part, and I see girls like younger women now. Um, just with everything that they're doing with the hair, with this, with that, it's like, 
just trying to be this image that you it that may not be you i think the media plays such a big part of it that's why i don't even watch as much tv as i used to anymore, because the images will keep you going it's like oh i need the next best thing and as far as with me and the same thing they'll paint this picture of a perfect man and i and i watch hallmark movies like all the time so i'm always like okay well how did they fall in love in two weeks and he knew what to say and he had the flowers and he had this and he had that why you can't do that so i have been that person too like well you must don't love me because you didn't do this and but just again not looking at the bigger picture of it that no we're living real life and they're reading from a script so, shouldn't, yeah. shouldn't we aspire though like shouldn't we still like are we like shouldn't we still try like you know what i mean like i still try to impress the heck out of my wife a lot like i try oh, i try no. to lift stuff i shouldn't like you know what i'm saying yeah. like <laughs> i definitely believe that we shouldn't like you shouldn't let yourself go or anything like that but it still should be an understanding of like you know i'm i'm human i'm, human, I'm not human. i'm not a model i'm not an actress I don't have a glamour team. I, I don't have a personal <laughs> trainer. I like donuts. Like this is just it. Like, we got, you why know, you just throw the donuts in there though? Because I like donuts, you know? <laughs> so we got to be able to allow ourselves to breathe too. But yeah, mm -hmm. definitely when we go out, I'm not going to, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to present myself as I, I'm going to be what I need to be when I need to be it, but mm -hmm. allow me to breathe and be me. That's what I right. say. Yeah. But another thing like uh, with that whole um with the whole relationship and the identity in a relationship i read this book um called two halves of a whole mm -hmm. and it's a and it's a book is a, a jewish couple the men the man wrote one half the, the woman wrote the other and it just talks about relationships but me i've been through counseling and my counselor you know she says she hates the line in jerry Maguire when she says you complete, you complete. so yeah. <laughs> she said that's the worst thing a person can say so my question really is it's like do two halves really make a whole and or do we really need to two, two whole separate individuals which one makes the better relationship because i kind of think of some pros and cons of both sides I believe I, I believe that I believe that people should be individuals in relationships. Like I, I believe that like you can still you have things together, you do things together, you have the bank account, you all of that stuff, but you should still be able to be an individual. Like, you know what I mean? Like thing there's some things like you need time, you need a you need space to be able to still be you. Otherwise, you will find yourself unhappy, no matter how happy you are in the relationship. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I think Will Smith said it or something. They said Will Smith said it, but you can't really quote Will Smith these days because. Uh, <laughs> but like what he said was true. What he said was true. Like uh, you can't you can't trust you. you I, I can't depend on my wife to be to for my happiness. Like because you know I think that a lot of that, that happens a lot of times. We get in relationships and that person becomes everything we are. I think that's when we lose our identity. That, that's when we lose our identity in the relationship, when we don't get that constant, those consistent reminders, you know, of who we actually are and where we come from in the, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I, just, I, I believe that we should definitely be individuals in relationships, not, you know what I mean? Like not two halves and make a whole, I, I don't What do you think, Tanisha? Two halves make a whole or two holes come together? Two holes. Oh, people. I didn't mean to say it like that. I did not mean two whole people come together. <laughs> well, when I was when I was younger, um, in my twenties and I was still single, I I did not completely understand this concept. I felt like I actually used to speak that like, oh, I'll have come with my half, he'll come with his half, then we'll be a whole. But that wasn't in maturity. However, being married for 12 years. You know, um, I, I I quickly learned that that's not possible. In the beginning, I think I suffocated my husband honestly because I um, 
I was in my early 30s when I got married. And so I was so happy to have a husband, you know, that I think I did something. And he, and he would want to do a thing. And I'd be like, but no, we're together, we're together. So I, I think initially in my situation, I was that half thinker, half and half. And as time progressed through counseling, through, you know, through life of married life, you know, I learned that, yes, I needed to be whole. I needed to find who Tanisha was, who Tanisha liked, because I think in the latter part of my 20s, I was so focused. So I want to be married. I want to be married. Like I was doing great things. Like I was traveling. I was, you know, doing different ministry things. I was, you know, I had um, opportunities in college because I, I was a, um, a non-traditional student. And I was so focused on wanting to be married that I could not enjoy the things that was being presented before me. Mm -hmm. And I actually told someone, I said, I did not maximize my time, you know, um, before I got married. And it, that when I did come into the marriage, I think I did put a lot of pressure on in the marriage, you know, you know, mm -hmm. wanting to be, us be together all the time. And, but now, a little bit older and, and some experience if, if it's God's will for me to go down that road again I definitely know I, I agree with what you said Shante I'm I kind of you know talk about the negative things about me too not negative but you know the not so good things to let the person know look this is what it is you know and not, I'm not day or anything but I'm just saying I, I just kind of tell people in general like you know um this is how I am. Oh, I'm not perfect. Whereas, whereas I used to try to be so perfect. Oh, well, what you want? Try to be like this extra service person. But um, but ultimately, I do believe that you need to be a whole and complete person. Have your identity where you guys will complement each other in ways. You know, where I'm weak, you may be stronger. Where I where you're weak, I may be stronger. And we can work off of that. So that's where I'm at now. So I believe in being a whole person. What do you think, Sean? Two halves or two whole people, two whole <laughs> individuals coming together. <laughs> Thanks for cleaning that up. That's the <laughs> no, <it's not> message. <laughs> um, no, <laughs> nah, I, I, I agree with, with Scott and Tanisha also. I think you should, uh, especially like when Scott was saying, being your, your own individual, uh, I think that's very important. I think you should be whole um, going into a relationship um, because it's 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 easy to lose yourself. Um, but at the same time, when it, that's why hobby, having hobbies and stuff like that is important, and, mm -hmm. and um, having your own little individual time, I think that's what helps a, a, a marriage grow when you both can be your own person. But then. Uh, one thing I like about my wife, because we're so different, is that she shows me her perspective. We have lived two totally different lives, and she showed me her perspective, and it helps me to see things in a, on a bigger spectrum. You know, it helps me to see, like, okay, let me think outside of myself. It helps me to see through those blind spots in my life. So I think it's important that you allow that person to be who they are, and y'all both be those whole individuals. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, to be this one big collective, you know, um, and to help you see things different. That's it. So I got, so my thing is, I agree that we definitely have to be individuals, but I guess one thing that I thought about when you, with the two whole people, individuals separate coming in with the separate lives, I think about the aspect of like, you know, like the button heads because everyone has this whole individual life that that they're trying to, then you're trying to hold on to. How does that affect the marriage when you come come together? And then of course, like you said, Tunisia, when it's two halves, you know, when it's the two halves um, coming together, then I guess it is an aspect of you're trying to get something from someone that you may not have, that, that you don't have, and you're trying to get it from that person, and that person may not have enough to give. Or So I, I don't know. Sometimes I think that it's, it can be like a two-edged sword because sometimes you come into a marriage and then there's too much independence and everyone's trying to hold on to just being themselves. I don't 
I think it just has to be an agreement when you come in. I think independence is a beautiful thing. They should come in with independence just like you should. But I think you have to be in agreement that, I mean, you, I think that's what, you know, it's an agreement. Like marriage and come together in a relationship is an agreement. I agree to share these things. Like, you know what I mean? I, I agree to that we do these things. I mean, not in those words. That'd be too simple. That'd be too easy. But, you know what I mean? Like over time, you begin to develop that awareness. Okay, this is what we... Cause you know, there's certain things my wife just not gonna do with me. Like I'm not going shopping with her. I'm not, I'm not. That's, you can have that all day. I don't want to shop for food with you. I don't want to shop for clothes. I don't want to shop for gift for me. I don't want to shop for nothing. So you can have that. And like, she also, she she doesn't mind when I do my, I do a guy's trip once a, once a year. Most of the time, you know what I mean? It's just hanging out and talking stuff, but it's fun. And you know, she don't really mind that. But you know what I mean? And I wish she would go somewhere sometime. I'll be trying to get her to go. <laughs> But she don't want to go nowhere. She's so happy being uh being this my is Scott Manny Ham. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, I'm not. No <laughs> way. Oh no, 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 I didn't say that. <laughs> no, you're not getting me cussed out. <laughs> <laughs> but she's she's it's recorded. She's, it's recorded. <laughs> but she's peaceful, like you know what I mean? Like she's peaceful in where she's at. Like, and I think that's dope. Like, you know what I mean? And I am too, but I like like to hang out sometime and she'd be like, nah, I'm good. You can have that. So, you know, we have our, we have our own spaces. So I, I find it dope. I find it invigorating. And I, I think, I, oh, I'm sorry. I was no. going to say, I think um, when you're being a whole person, you know, even in your marriage or in your relationship, something drew you two together. So I, I feel like if, when you, if you highlight, in your relationship, the thing that brought you together, even if, you know, if, if each as individuals have your own separate, let's use career as a um, example, if you have your own different types of career paths, but there, but there's something that, that is more, it's something that gravitated you together. It may be, it may be a hobby that you two only like to do together, you know, or it may be what my, my thing was, my thing is I like on Friday nights, let's, let's watch a Netflix movie and just, you know, hang out and chill you know, for a minute, just, you know, let the week kind of get quiet. So something, I, I feel like something brought you together where you can just be yourselves with each other. Because um, when you learn how to be your most authentic self, you're going to learn how to be your most authentic self with your partner on a level that you can't do in the workplace mm -hmm. on your career path, that you can't even do sometimes with your family of origin, because as we grow, we evolve as people. And even like, our, our parents or our siblings, they don't know us like our spouses know us. They don't know that innermost That's true. secrets and all of that stuff, you know? So, I mean, I feel like you could still be an individual, but still be corporate together, you know, mm -hmm. and, and not always bump heads. You know, not to say, of course, there's sometimes going to be, I like the way my pastor said, heated fellowship. You're not going to do it for a seven, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, but ultimately you can't find that common ground where you, you two can kumbaya together, you know, with with each other, like you can't do with anyone else. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Sean, I'll ask you this. So I'm I'm going, I'm going biblical. So when the Bible says <laughs> the two come together to be one flesh, how does that play a part in? Well, how do you feel like it will play a, a part in um maintaining those individual or your your own identity when we're becoming one with another person yeah I, I think I think I think that comes my interpretation is more of uh we're 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 going to start this life together we have two different experiences in life and we bring them together under one unit to create something new together. And that's i.e. family, um, you know, a family mission statement, whatever that is to make your family move forth. Like you bringing these two together to start something new and to start something new genera generationally. So that's my take of the whole, um, the two becoming one, but it takes time. Uh, it's this it's like this merger right you gotta have these two people that come together and i believe scott was saying like being in agreement y'all gotta have this agreement and it takes a lot of grace and it takes a lot of time and i think one of the biggest mistakes that we make with relationships is we don't give it time to merge 
we just think we're supposed to have it all together because, uh, of course, because of the things that we see in the hour and a half movie, right? <laughs> and I think we, we so that's where the frustration comes in. And it's like, oh, you got this wrong again? Or, oh, you didn't listen to me? Or, but it takes time. And that's why I believe that if you, if you don't have grace to give to someone, um, it's it's gonna it's gonna go bad, and I and I think too you gotta have uh, grace, and you gotta have acceptance, and uh, when you have those two things together, I believe you can help a marriage grow. Yeah. I think that grace is key right there. Like I couldn't even figure out the word for that. I was, you <laughs> have to you gotta have grace, like literally, like you gotta be able to give it. Andy, you know what I mean? Understand that you go need it at times too, because you're wrong. Like we all wrong, it's, you know, especially starting out a relationship. But that's key right there for real. I like that. Yeah, I think that, yeah. But in, in all things, we, I guess we have to extend grace to people. But so I'm thinking about your podcast, um, the, It's Scary to Remarry. Um, <laughs> But I think, but the, the scary part for me about remarriage is, will I lose myself again, you know, in, in, in a new situation or a, a new, new marriage? So I think that's what kind of keeps me from, keeps me kind of at bay because I like this person that I discovered and how, what are some ways that you guys think that we can be able to maintain our identities once we get into the relationships, like some things that we could do or what are some things that you do? I think, I think therapy is important. Um, therapy, all, I, I know for me, I've been with my therapist for the past two years. So uh, that comes with <clears throat> growth and maturity and unlearning some things. I think that's huge too, to have the ability to unlearn and learn again. Um, I think that's, that's very important. I, I was like, you were talking about with the whole scary to marry because I, I named it that because when you go into a new relationship, you're, you wondering, do I have what it takes to do this again? Because I said, yes, to somebody else before and you start to you know you start to get these insecurities like do i really have what it takes because now you're taking on a new person and their traits and their bad habits and all these other things um yeah so that's why uh shameless plug i guess but you brought it up but i just kind of wanted to <laughs> oh, talk no, about yeah. it I think you that's a, I think that's a no i thought it was really cool though but i mean i really did think that when i i when i um why listened to one of one of your shows and that's the one thing that came to me like oh you know what i never thought about it it is scary and for me the scary part is i don't want to lose myself again how you know so um so Tanisha, what do you think going into, cause I know you're in transition, but you know. Um, I will transparent moment. I, at this point, um, I have a longing to wanna, you know, share my life with someone, you know, in marriage, you know, however, right now, I'm just at a place where I, I'm, I'm doing what um, Sean said, I'm in therapy. I'm in a rediscovery phase, you know, as far as um, myself and my family life, because my family looks different now. Um, I, I like to say we went from being a family of four in the house, now we're a family of three. So I'm learning how with that. I mean, I, 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 what I'm going to say right now, I'm, I'm just kind of taking it, well, first off, getting out of my first situation. So um, going through that process and, you know, and maybe down the line, if something comes about um, that looks interesting, I think I think the biggest part for me is it will. I, I the scary to remarry is a is a great title because and, and a true title um, because I, I guess my thing would be not losing myself, but but putting in emotions and then not working, like, you know, and, and getting into a situation that doesn't work, getting emotions involved. So, but that's why. I'm going through therapy to work that other stuff out. So we'll see what the future holds. 
So everybody talking about therapy. What does the therapist say? <laughs> I was about to say, Kamisha, uh, if I was your therapist, I'd tell you, do not, do not change who you are. <laughs> otherwise you're gonna get something that you really not that you, that you don't want like so continue to be you continue to be loving continue to be open continue giving your heart and if somebody don't accept it you just have to be aware of when they don't accept it and when and when they want you to change and if they if they're not happy with who you are if they're not helping you build up who you are then they're not for you you know what i mean like so whoever comes and they had to be coming in with bricks like to help you build who you are as an individual and be willing to grow with you so just don't stop, don't, don't cut the love, don't cut the love well off. Keep, keep being who you are, keep being a loving person because if you cut that off, you're gonna end up getting somebody who cut theirs off too, mm. you know what I mean? So continue to love and if somebody don't accept you, just be willing to leave and you know what I mean? Like I, um, I had a friend tell me, uh, I think it was, yeah, it was right when I was uh, starting my practice and everything and I have a problem specifically like I would say I'm, I'm a caring person. I'm a therapist all the time. Like I, I don't really, I don't turn this off. Like I'm a therapist all the time. So, um, and I was saying like, I got to learn how to be a little bit more, uh, I guess it wouldn't be assertive, but a little bit more aggressive and a little bit more, no, I'm not doing this. And you have to pay this. And then she was just like, nah, she's like, if, if, if you start being, if you start becoming that person, what is the reason that you became this person all your life for? What did you grow into this for? for if you're going to start to be somebody else don't change your character that's where you hire people to be mean like you know what i mean like that's where you got friends to come in for a check for you i don't know about him he had to go you know what i mean don't stop being you don't stop being you please don't stop being you because you seem like you got a warm heart don't cut off the love because then you're going to attract the wrong person okay i'm done i quit <laughs> <laughs> that was a free session <laughs> But Booby, that other part, like I, oh, Shante, that other part, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I know Shante personally. Um, that uh, that other part, I would say, I would just suggest that, um, like you was talking about how how do you know if he's for you or something? You're doing a lot. So if he coming in adding to it, and if he coming in and he enjoying, like got these ideas of how you can make this better and doing what you, you know what I mean? Like improving, like helping you become more of who you are. Like that's, you know, if somebody come in, they try and change you then, you know, as long as he helping more. You, you, you know, know I ain't about to let nobody change me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's, but you know, I do look for those red flags though, actually. Mm -hmm. when, when people, when I start to communicate with people and they say like, oh, what about this? Or, or you know, they notice every fall. Well, how about if yeah. you do this? And it's like, oh no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, too much so, yeah so I, I get that. But this was a really good conversation. And so I kind of want to wrap it up with, I know the one big thing that we all say as far as holding on to your identity is the therapy. And like, I'm, I'm a proponent. That's how I was able to rediscover. And well, I won't even say rediscover because I had to discover, you know, because I just went from this to this to this to this. So I had to actually discover myself in this late state, later stage in life. But um, what is one other thing each person that you can tell a person that they can do to maintain who they are when they enter into or while they're in their relationships? What'd you say? Be transparent. Mm -hmm. Somebody yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think being honest up front, I think sometimes we, we worry if we're going to end up losing somebody that we really like because uh, we're afraid to put our flaws up front. And we worry if this person is going to like me because, it, and I realize too that if we can all look through the lens of we all are broken, uh, that helps us to extend that grace to people. Because I think we look at people, oh, they're so perfect. And we put them on this pedestal. And once we find out that they're human, then the fall is great. It's like this whole Humpty Dumpty thing, right? 
and we, you know, struggling to try to put this image of this person back together again. Once we realize that they are flawed and it's like, I thought you was perfect. And you're trying to figure out, oh man, you, you know, you, you're human just like the rest of us, you know? So if we could just learn to extend grace and to uh, realize that we all are broken, then uh, I think, I think that'll help us in relationships. I think um, playing off the grace and um, I think one of the things that you should do is always be empathetic and understand that you are flawed as well. Like we are all flawed. We can all make better choices. We can all do things a little differently and a little better or, you know what I mean? We can all, you know, I could go to lose 10 pounds, maybe 20, you know what I mean? <laughs> but you know, so I can't be mad at you if you 10 pounds heavier or you, you didn't gain 20 pounds in this relationship. So just be empathetic, understanding that other people your spouse is not, like you just said, your spouse is not perfect. And, you know, she's flawed, just like you're flawed and we are all flawed. So just, you know, accept the other person for who they are. And you got to accept yourself for who you are at times in order to change it in the first place. So Those are our good. So therapy, transparency, <laughs> honesty, and being honest to not be enough to let a relationship go. If, it, if they can accept who you are and empathizing with one another, with yourself and with the, the individual. So the so last thing I like to do is one word to that identifies who you are right now in this moment. I'll go first. I'll say I'm afraid. <laughs> and that's because it's just a lot going on, so and trying to take it all in. So. I'm flawed. Oh. <laughs> I'm flawed, but fixing it consistently. Cautious. Not too cautious. <laughs> <laughs> I would say bold. <laughs> that's, that's, that's for me. I was bold enough to uh, remarry and start all over again. I would say bold for me. That's good. So I want, I don't want to keep you guys much longer because we can go on and on talking about relationships, but I thank each of you for coming online and chatting with me. Um, I hope we can do it again sometimes. Uh, and thank you and good night. Uh, good night. Thank you. Bye. Bye.